Well, this summer, we're going to be taking on the topic of prayer. There's nothing more important we could devote ourselves to than, than learning how to pray, growing in prayer, and being disciplined with prayer. Yeah. And so we're going to dive into that topic this summer uh, for the next two months or so. And we have Ben Hartel, one of our members, uh, former pastor, current parent, mm-hmm. um, and yeah. uh, and just an awesome guy who, I, whenever he preaches for our church, I'm always super encouraged. I know a lot of you heard him. So um, we're going to be kind of picking his brain on different passages and different topics related to prayer this summer. So, But what better place to start when talking about prayer than with Jesus' own instructions about prayer? Jesus, as you may know, he gives us kind of a step-by-step helpful tutorial on how to yeah. pray. Yep. And there's so much depth and uh, and beauty in this passage. So I'm going to read the passage, and then, Ben, you're going to lead us through some of this okay. uh, today. So Matthew chapter 6, we're going to read the Lord's Prayer, as it's often known. Uh, Matthew 6, starting in verse 9. Jesus says, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All right, so what can we learn from this instruction by Jesus on how to pray? Yeah, I think one of the things that's interesting about it is this prayer is in response to really the only time that Jesus' disciples asked him specifically to teach them something. Hmm. Um, it's like they spent all this time with him, and they, it's kind of like they narrowed it down to this one request, teach us to pray. Um, there's no record of them asking Jesus to specifically teach them anything else. And so I think it, it very well could be that they noticed from spending all this time with Jesus that prayer was like really central to his life. Like it was a profound thing in his life. Um, and they wanted to know more about it. Well, wow, yeah. that's a great observation. Yeah. Cause I mean, he could have talked about a fish. They obviously yes. had some issues there. At he times was pretty and, good at that. Yeah. And yeah. maybe some self-confidence or <laughs> wisdom or any of these things. Some but, of those healing things. Yeah. Or, the healing would be nice yeah. to know, but teach us to pray that that's yeah. really interesting. So yeah. That, that, so what do we see kind of in the general flow of this passage? Yeah. Well, one of the other things that's interesting about it is it's short. Yeah. Right. They didn't say Jesus teach us to pray, and then he didn't spend the next you know several hours on on a uh, seminar on it. It's roughly fifty words, and it's um, wow. something that you could pray if you recited it, if if you wanted to do that in like twenty seconds or something. But the structure of it is is interesting. I don't know that we spent. I think it's very familiar. Right. Mm-hmm. This prayer is very familiar to a lot of people. Um, it can be kind of liturgical, I think, in some you know, denominations and churches and stuff, but um, it begins with God and then it moves inward. Um, I think sometimes when we pray, we tend to start the other way around. Hmm. Um, we, we can, of course, pray about anything, but we'll think, okay, here's what's going on in my life. Here's what's on my mind. Here's what I need help with. And that's totally fine. And we go right to God with that. But Jesus starts um, with God. The structure of the prayer, the framework of the prayer moves kind of from God, um, outward from God, you know, inward towards us, or focuses on heaven to start and then moves uh, towards earth um, and our experience. And there's six requests in it. Hmm. Um, The first three are about God's name, his kingdom, his will. And then the second three are about what we need, like our needs and being provided for forgiveness and, and delivery or, or temptation and things. So, yeah, and obviously with those that you know breakdown of those two trios, yeah. one is much more cosmic, yeah. eternal, yep. and then he gets down to God cares about our daily needs. Yep, exactly. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. So let's start at the beginning then, and you okay. can help us walk through this. And make sure you get up on that mic. Okay, great. Just so yes. we don't want to miss any of this. Yes. So he, say, he starts off by saying, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So what do we see here? Well, in, in he's starting by saying, pray then in this way. He's not saying, we don't want to misunderstand that we're supposed to pray exactly these words in this exact order as if it's some sort of magic formula. And if yeah. we get it right, then God will do exactly what we want. That's not, that's not the idea. But the prayer is addressed to somebody, and it's a reminder that this prayer is addressed to our Father. And he even, just to interject there, he even says in verse 7 of this same passage, don't heap up empty mm. phrases as the Gentiles do. Right. And it's it's sad to me that so many, you know, like for let's just pick on our Catholic friends, yes, right? We right. love them, but 
to just use this as a way to right. you repeat this thing 10 times to kind of get over a sin or yep. get absolved of a sin yep. is so counter to what he's teaching us to exactly do. Exactly right. He's not saying this is a magical formula. He's right. saying pray in this kind of a pattern. Yes, pray so, in this way or pray like this. or And I've found it in my own life to be really helpful. It's a really helpful structure to sort of keep me on track, um, mm-hmm. you know, with what to pray for, especially if there's something where I'm like, I want to pray, but I don't know exactly what to pray for or something like that. And it starts with who it's addressed to, our Father. Um, and, and if you think about it, he says, our Father, right? So there's a, there's a couple things there. One is our, so he's speaking with his disciples. He's speaking with, or today we'd be talking with other Christians, and yeah. it's kind of community language. We share this same loving Father. Um, it speaks of relationship. Um, this is not a cosmic force or something that's out there in the universe. This is our father, our creator. Um, and we have that kind of relationship with him where we can address him. And even father. that language, I mean, you don't, you don't hear that kind of language in the Old Testament. No. But there's a few people in the Old Testament that are called the son of God. Yeah. David, yeah. Uh, I believe Jacob, mm-hmm. a couple of others. But here it's, we're all children yeah. of God. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. And to spend some time on that, too, I think that's where sometimes if you're just praying it to recite it in these exact words, you lose some of the depth, I think, that's here. Um, And it's so easy to just address God as, you know, however we pray, Heavenly Father or God or however we address it, but to think that He is our Father and we are His children. It's that perspective. I think that's an important part of how this prayer begins. Um, So, yeah, and it's it's a name of affection and intimacy. So our, our Father, then he says, our Father in heaven. Right. Which I think is a helpful reminder to us that God is, is in control of everything, that God mm-hmm. is sovereign, um, that we're talking to him. He's not real physically present with us right here, but he's in heaven. The language could mean the heavens, meaning he's everywhere. He, he's everywhere all at the same time. In heaven is a reference to where God is. Um, but at the same time, he's not distant. He's not far off to where we can't address him as father, and he hears us right away. So That's great. Okay, and then he asks, hallowed be your name. That's the first request. Yeah. Yep. So what is that? Uh, that language may be unfamiliar for a lot of people. Yeah, and where did I just see this? I just saw, maybe, where did I see this? On some, something on social media where everybody on, um, Je- this was a question on Jeopardy. Interesting. And uh, the word hollowed was missing out of this phrase, and nobody got it right. Wow. And it was just a commentary on, I think, uh, I think a pastor posted it, and just was talking about like biblical illiteracy, I guess, that nobody knows. But nobody uses that word anyway, so maybe that's why. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what it really means, is, in simplest terms, is holy, um, honored. The way I think about it, if I'm praying this, is that, you know, I, I want. God, I want you to be honored in my life mm. in everything that I do mm-hmm. in my day. Um, it also re- reminds us, I think, that we're praying to a holy God. Um, this is the same God uh, that spoke to Moses in the burning bush. <laughs> this mm. is the same God uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration, yet he's our father. Um, and he's not inaccessible or abstract or anything. And so that's that's. I think it's... Uh, a reference to honoring God and praying that mm. God would be honored in our lives. Yeah, that's good because, yeah, obviously in our culture, it might even be normal to think of God as our father or our friend. Yes. But he's also holy. Yes. And he is distinct from us. And yep. so there's that the tension between the two, which yeah. are obviously resolved in Jesus, bringing yep. us near to the father and yep. cleansing us of our sins. But yep. that's great. So then he goes on in verse 10, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. What is it speaking to? Yeah, I think sometimes this is one, I think, maybe the more familiar parts of this. Um, You know, I think we pray a lot uh, for God's will in our life, right? We want to know what God's will is, and and we pray for it uh, in our lives. But what what Jesus is saying here is, your kingdom come. If you think about a kingdom, we're thinking about a place where a king rules and reigns, um, and that's his kingdom. And so... Uh, a kingdom, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is where Jesus is ruling and reigning. And part of what one of my favorite uh, descriptions of it has been wherever God is in charge. I picked mm. that up from a kid's Bible at one point, but um, sometimes those they can make things so simple and easy to understand. Um, but we're praying for God's kingdom, his rule and his reign to take place in everyday life, in our lives, in the city that we live in, in the place that we work, in our families, in our churches, um, those kinds of things. 
Um, and the kingdom of God is also a, a reference to all of the things that Jesus said and did when he was here. So we're praying for those types of things to take place really in our everyday lives and in the physical places that we are. Um, so, yeah. That's great. Yeah, and, and God's <clears throat> kingdom coming and his will being done are inevitable. Yes. So it is kind of hard for us to understand why would we pray for something that's inevitable. Yeah. But I think God invites us into participation in his will. Yep. So just because we know somebody, you know, people are going to come to faith in Jesus yeah. through God's yes. sovereign election doesn't mean we're not going to pray for them right. and, and ask God to realize that in our lives yes. and to manifest that. So yeah. we, these are important things to be praying for on the big picture. Right. And, the, and we're, we participate in those things. God, we're, we have the privilege of being used by God to participate in what his will is yeah. in this world. And I think that's a lot of this prayer, I think, can be um, good reminders for us about the mm -hmm. way that we think about things, you know, that we're involved in what God's will is in the world. If we want to submit ourselves to that and, and you know, have our eyes open to that and look for what God's doing and be involved in it. So that's good. Yeah. It reminds me that all praying is inherently theological. Yes. Right. We're engaging yes. our, our hearts and it's emotional. Yes. But it's also based upon how we view God. Do we yep. rightly see him yep. for who he is? Yes. And God's inviting us into, um, Participating in that, you know, in the work he's doing yeah. in, in our humble way, yeah. right? Obviously, we're not the, the defining uh, role, we're not the main actors yeah. in any sense, but God still invites us into that. So, okay, so that's kind of yeah. the first half. Anything else in the first half we should talk about there? No, I think it's good. Just kind of a reminder that um, it sort of begins with God and then moves towards us. So we're praying, you know, for God's name, his kingdom, his will. It begins with him. And then the the next part of the prayer is is more about um, us and the yeah. things that we need from God. Good. So let's see these. So the first requests are your name, your kingdom, your will. Yep. So we're beginning with God mm -hmm. and then working down to earth or inwards to ourselves. Yep. And the second trio of requests are give us, forgive us, deliver us. So yeah. let's start with verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Yeah, I love, I love this part of this prayer. Um, and again, back to kind of the beginning where we prayed, Our Father, this says, give us, me and I are nowhere uh, in this prayer. Not that there's anything wrong with asking for things specifically for ourselves, but yeah. it's just a reminder that there's more to life than just what we're doing, that we're part of a family, that we're God's children. Um, and we're asking for help um, in, a, in a very... Uh, in a world where we're very self-sufficient sometimes, um, and somehow yeah. that's uh, a virtue uh, in, in some in some circles, um, that we need to be provided for. We're asking for help. This is about humility. We're dependent on God every day. Um, and I think it's a good reminder, and it's healthy for us to come to terms with that every Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, and he's saying, uh, give us today our daily bread. Yeah. Right? I mean, bread is this basic picture yeah. of sustenance of life of yep. the things that we need yep so it's not just you know as a kid i'm like well, i don't necessarily <laughs> even want bread today yeah, yeah. <laughs> missing the whole point no toast is, today i don't want toast yeah. i had toast yesterday it's about this is the most common picture of needing god to provide for That's us right. yep. and even extends back to the exodus yep. right with yep. the, the manna coming from heaven yeah on a daily basis every day yeah. every day i think it's a reference to that yeah and it's 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 helpful too, I guess depends on the person, but I know for me, I tend to get out in front of myself a little bit. There's nothing wrong with us praying for stuff for tomorrow and next week and five years from now, but we're not promised that anyways. We have no idea. You know, tomorrow's got enough worries of its own. God knows exactly what we need for today. Yeah. And it's interesting because I find myself sometimes praying for things in the future and not praying for things for the day, and I find myself going, I don't, I don't even know what I, I, I somehow I like as if I've figured out what I need today, and yeah. I really don't. Um, it seems so tangible and manageable, like it's right there, it's today, I got today. Mm -hmm. um, but this reminds us that we really don't. We have no idea what's going to happen next hour and you know this afternoon, and so we really need to provide, you know, God to provide for us and to ask Him to absolutely. Do that. Yeah, so. and I remember when um, were you there uh, last year when Derek Brown preached at our church on this passage. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah so he talked yeah. about the thing that stood out from his sermon, and he's just such a good you know, expositor of the Word, yeah. but he, he was talking in depth about just how we take for granted God's provision. Yeah. And he was saying, just in you going to the store to get yeah. what you need. That's I mean, right. we kind of saw this in COVID when things were disrupted. And yeah. We're like, we don't know if there's going to be food yep. in that place <laughs> right. tomorrow. Right, show I mean, up and there's nothing there. That's, that, that was a crazy yeah. feeling, but he was saying... 
how God needs to, you know, bring the insects to pollinate, pollinate, pollen. Well, I don't know what the, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The, the, the stuff, the, the, stuff. He, the sun needs to rise, yeah. right? So photosynthesis yeah. can happen. So all these different acts can happen just to grow the food. Yep. And then the yes. chain of events to get that food to you. And he was saying, essentially, there's a thousand small providences yeah. in God just giving you yeah. one bite of food. Right. And, and yet we tend to, because we've never gone hungry, many sure. of us, we look and we go, oh, of course I'm going to have food. Well, I yeah. need to pray this. Yeah, exactly. Not realizing, yeah. no, you depend every step of the way on a God who is sustaining you. Yeah. It's really humbling. Yes. Yes, and I think it's, it's again, these are practical good things for us to pray, but they're also just great reminders because, again, we don't always think that way. Yeah. We take a lot of things for granted, and there's so much perspective, I think, in this prayer. So it's good. really good, yeah. Good, good. So then verse 12 says, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Yeah, and there's there's so much in this. I think we we need to be forgiven every day, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully as we're growing in Christ, we're um, Christ is working more in our lives to make us more like Him. We're sinning less as we mature, uh, but we have a, a regular need to be forgiven, um, and this is a reminder of that. And it's also helpful to think through that you know God is faithful to forgive over and over and over again if we confess our sins, and it's a need that we have uh, yeah. to be forgiven. Um, and we're already a forgiven people that, mm. that God ha- has forgiven, and that you know we need to ask for that forgiveness daily. And we also need, it's a prayer for forgiveness to remind us that we need to be a forgiving people because we've been forgiven. Yeah, yeah, that's no. good. It reminds me of John 13 where Jesus is trying to you know, wash the disciples' feet and Peter says no. Yeah. And then John says, or yeah. Jesus says, you know, if you don't, if you don't let me wash you, you have no yeah. part with me. Yep. And then Peter's like, give me the whole bath. <laughs> yeah. you know? And he the says, no, if, you, if you've been washed, you don't need to be washed again, but your feet need to be cleaned. Yeah. And I think that's a picture of that once for all forgiveness, justification, yep. right? Yep. Uh, f- for our sins, given the righteousness of Jesus. So yeah. we don't need to have that happen to us again. Never, no. yeah. But we need to daily be restored to relationships, that's be right. cleansed by God. Yep. And so what an important prayer to be yeah. praying every single day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So forgive us our debts. And he, of course he, he adds on there as we have forgiven our debtors, right? Yeah. So we're also called implied in the yeah it's, um, it's implied kind of yeah, yeah. we yeah. just heard a sermon on this yes. topic so yeah. but yeah as if if you've been forgiven you have to also in turn forgive others yes that that's clearly implied it's not saying that um you you get forgiveness by forgiving right but it's a natural outflow that's of right. uh, forgiveness that's right i mean one of the things that defines us is that we're a forgiven people because yeah. of what christ has done for us and so it should be a, a core part of who we are as a forgiving people as well that's good that's good. And then, he, and then he ends by saying, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yeah. I actually heard that the the Pope a while back was trying to change this. Really? That wouldn't be good. That it, w- it was, um, it don't let us be tempted or something like that, because the, the language sounds confusing, right? Like, well, mm-hmm. why would God ever lead us into temptation? Right. But but I think, yeah, no, what's, it's, the, what's the idea here? Yeah, the idea is that we're going to be tempted to sin. And this is, a, this is part of the prayer is a prayer for protection. I think it's... Um, Maybe a good reminder again, or a reality check, um, that there are evil. Evil is at work in the world. Yeah. There are things that, uh, again, we may go approach our day and think, you know, I got today. You know what I mean? But you don't know what might pop up around the next corner that might tempt you. Um, so this is a prayer for protection. You know, yeah. to ask the Lord to keep you strong and to resist temptation. Um, and it's we need we're a people that need to be protected, just That's as great. we need to be forgiven, just as we need to be provided for daily. That's good. Yeah. So just some some recap here. So we're praying to the Father, yep. right? We're asking that His name would be hallowed yep. in our lives and in our world, right? That His yep. kingdom would come, His will be done, That's meaning right. that His reign would be manifest on this earth. Um, we're asking for our daily needs to be met, for yep. our sins to be forgiven, yep. and we're asking God to guard us yes. from evil. Yep. So these are things that we should be praying every single day. Yeah. And I, I agree. I use this as a framework very often. Yep. Okay, start by praising God for who He is. Totally. And then move to, God, I want to see your will manifest in, in yep. the world yep. to then the, the specific things that I need. Yep. And all of those matter, right? God wants all us to matters. come and ask him yeah. for the things that we need. That's he's a, he's our father. So, yeah, well, this is great. A great start. We're going to get more into this in the coming weeks mm-hmm. and look at different aspects of prayer. So I hope you'll yeah. join us in coming weeks. Awesome. 
Thanks so much for watching this video. We're uploading great biblical content every single week, so make sure you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment down below. We'd love to discuss with you. If you want to support us financially, there's a link in the description of this video. Thanks so much.